The Controller Chronicles is made possible only through generous donations from viewers like you, as I don't run a Patreon. If you have a controller or joystick you'd like to donate to the show, feel free to send me a private message. I strongly believe in donor privacy, and will only reveal the information each donor feels comfortable with. For everyone who has donated already, I sincerely thank you. This series would not be possible without you. And now, on with the show. Hello and welcome to a brand new season of The Controller Chronicles, the series dedicated to all things game controllers. If you're new here, check out the playlist in the video description for a backlog of previous episodes. So this, of course, is the NES Advantage, one of the most well-known home arcade joysticks of all time. Released in 1987 as a joint ventureship between Nintendo and ASCIIWare, it has a simple, non-microswitch joystick, two oversized face buttons, start and select, a slow button, two auto-fire enable disable buttons, and the turbo rate potentiometers, as well as a toggle switch to change from player 1 to player 2. The NES Advantage is one of the most iconic controllers around. It's certainly not the best joystick, but it does the job well and it enhances the experience of many NES games. But I'm not here to talk about the NES Advantage. Starting off this season is a rather rare item sent to the show by GamerFreak1988. From 1989 by the now long-defunct Taiwanese company Hanyu, the Hanyu Explorer 1 for the NES offers automatic firing power, slow motion control, and adjustable turbo fire. And then, in questionable English, the box proudly proclaims. With the Explorer 1 joystick, you can play more excitedly with the touch of a speed up turbo button. When the action is getting too fast, touch the slow motion button as to slow the game down. For all types of TV games, Hmm, surely a poet wrote that. Other than the front, the box is very basic, with the Hanyu Explorer 1 name on each side so no one will ever be confused what this is. Well, except for the bottom. There's absolutely nothing on the bottom. So, with that said, let's open it up. First thing you'll notice is that they save money printing manuals by simply showing a diagram on the box itself, both in English and Chinese. Note that two of the buttons are not labeled. We'll get back to this in a moment. Continuing on, you'll notice that although the cardboard box has not weathered the past 28 years very well, the joystick itself is completely brand new old stock, including the joystick ball that screws into place. But you collectors out there need not freak out watching me open this old stock controller, as GamerFreak1988 also sent me another Hanyu controller one. Here you can see the NES Advantage and the Hanyu 1 side by side. Both joysticks are essentially the same length and height, but not width. The NES Advantage is just a tad bit wider than Hanyu Explorer 1. As well, the face buttons of the Advantage are much larger than that of the Hanyu. Nevertheless, this is an area where I feel, no pun intended, the Hanyu has the Advantage over the Advantage. Because of how the buttons are designed to spring up when pressed, it is entirely possible to get either button stuck with normal gameplay. On the Hanyu, it's not possible to do that, as on this design, it's not possible to press the buttons on an angle. Both the Hanyu and the Advantage have essentially the same size and feel with their joysticks. In fact, both sticks are even the same height. Now let's take a look at the Hanyu's buttons. First, of course, are the B and A action buttons. Above them are the turbo fire buttons, which unlike the NES Advantage, don't toggle the large action buttons to be turbo. Here, these buttons still stay as regular and above them are turbo. Above them are the potentiometers to adjust the turbo rate, which have the same range as the Advantage. Next you have the player 1 or 2 toggle switch, start, select, slow, and the star and pound buttons. You can press these down, but they'll never do anything. So, why are they even there? Well, this is where we return to the box, which labels these both in Chinese, which translates to future use. So, what the heck does that mean? I think it's likely that Hanyu had plans to release joysticks on many platforms other than just the NES, such as the PC Engine, Amiga, MSX, Mega Drive, and so on. By manufacturing only one shell with interchangeable parts, the company could make joysticks for all these different platforms while only having to spend money on a single mold. 
Further supporting my theory is the fact that the Hunyu Explorer 1 has a trap door to what is clearly a battery compartment to house four AA batteries. But this battery bay lacks battery terminals. On the back is a large piece of removable plastic where the controller cord is located. The battery bay and this rear-facing area suggest to me that Hanyu were future-proofing the design so that down the road, they could release wireless joysticks with simple IR receivers. To my knowledge, nothing ever came of this, but that would perfectly explain both the battery compartment and the rear panel on an otherwise completely wired joystick. Due to the joystick's multitude of unusual design choices, I'm sure that many of you out there will want to see what it looks like inside. So let's do that. Hmm, well, on second thought, watching someone remove screws slowly is quite boring, so let's speed it up. So here is the motherboard, the battery bay is here, here's the joystick, here's the cord, here's the two pots, and that's really all there is to see on this side. Next let's take out the rest of the screws. and the board just pops right out. So here is the face of the Hanyu Explorer 1 board. They're faint to see, but if you look really closely, here are where the star and pound buttons press. As you can see, there are no traces. They don't go anywhere or do anything. There is nothing on the other side either. A very curious design from Hanyu back in 1989. Next, let's take a look at some gameplay showing this thing in action. Being a clone of the NES Advantage, the Hanyu Explorer 1 excels and fails in exactly the same areas. Action shooters like Mega Man are a blast to play with an arcade stick like this, and the Turbo Fire really comes in handy. It should go without saying, but Tough as Nails arcade shoot em ups are a blast to play with this solid 8 way joystick and turbo buyer buttons. Other games don't feel quite so great with the Hanyu. The mini baseball games on NES feel clumsy without a proper D pad. And the same is true with puzzle classics like Tetris. Mind you, I can still play games like this with the Hanyu, I'm simply saying that they're not ideally suited. I once again want to give a big thank you to GamerFreak1988 from New York City for sending me these unique controllers. I previously had no idea these arcade sticks even existed, and now the Hanyu Explorer 1 is easily my favorite joystick I've ever used for the NES or Famicom. Well, that about does it for this episode of the Controller Chronicles. If you want to see more, I've got all the previous episodes in the handy playlist ready for browsing. If you like this video, please make sure to hit that thumbs up button and share this video with a friend. 2018 will be a very busy year for me, but if I continue to get viewer donations, I'll be making videos like this on a much more regular basis. That's it for now, thanks for watching and supporting my channel.